this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. We're live in San Francisco, California for the Red Hat Summit, celebrating their 10th year of operation with Red Hat Summit. Certainly Red Hat has been around for more than 10 years, uh, changing the game in the open source world. Certainly the Linux revolution has enabled massive amounts of innovation that's going to a whole nother level. We've been documenting it live here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and uh, I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman, analyst at wikibon.org. And Stu, um, yesterday, day one, we had a great set of interviews. We had uh, Pod, Padma uh, from Cisco, we had the CEO of Red Hat, the EVPs, all the top dogs, the platform guys, this is an operating system play that has taken open source to a tier one viable uh, technology that is enabling this massive innovation cycle that we're seeing, Stu. So open source has gone from the old days of a cheap alternative to now the backbone, the bedrock, the foundation of innovation across all industries. All companies will be a technology company according to Cisco's CTO. Uh, and Red Hat's in the center of it, Stu. And, and they're humble, they're not the big muscle-bound, marketing-oriented companies. Red Hat has a brand, they have an operating system, they got 10 years, so day two, what's your take on day one and what are you expecting to hear from Yeah, yeah John, I, I think as, as you stated, uh, open source has moved way beyond the price discussion. Open source can deliver quality, open source can deliver you know, better security even, and uh, you know, we've talked a lot about the community. And with Red Hat at you know, $1.3 billion, you know, the big question is, where's that next billion dollars? One of the big opportunities in front of them, of course, is, is OpenStack. If you look at this show, it's about 4,500 people, and John, you know, next month you and I are going to be partnering up again to go to the OpenStack Summit in Atlanta. Um, and Red Hat is positioning themselves to be the Red Hat of OpenStack. They want to be the distribution of choice. Um, we, we've got the head of their OpenStack group uh, coming on the program today, and you know, there's still uh, some work to do on OpenStack, uh, you know, and Red Hat needs to kind of build their partnerships in their ecosystem, but there's a huge opportunity in front of them. Of course, the, the other big bet that uh, Red Hat is pushing on is, is OpenShift. Uh, the, the CTO of uh, Red Hat this morning talked about the blurring of the lines between infrastructure as a service, which they use with OpenStack, and platform as a service, which is OpenShift. So I want to dig into that a little bit more. Uh, and uh, you know, nice announcement this morning that Dell is endorsing uh, you know, Red Hat's cloud strategy. So Dell's been a little hot and cold on OpenStack. They're partnering with Red Hat, and it, it, it's a kind of nice big logo on the OpenShift ecosystem. Stu, tell, talk about the, the horses on the track, talk about the ecosystem, because you know, as you analyze this market, you got to look at kind of the macro trends at the marketplace level, you got to look at the business models, the stock prices, the, the, you said where's the next billion dollars going to come from, from Red Hat certainly, there's the ecosystem behind that, um, and then you got to look at the technologies and ultimately look at the customer value, right? So if you, if you look at stepping through that, how are you analyzing this cloud, OpenStack, OpenShift, open source game? Because there is an infrastructure dynamic going on that, that is profound and quite frankly, something new that is creating an inflection point. That is, the convergence at the infrastructure level. The development of cloud, private and public and hybrid with virtualization, now we've got containers, all that above. What, how, do you, how do you analyze the market? Yeah, so, so, so John, uh, if you look at OpenStack, uh, you know, it, it's really like a, a four-year-old startup. Uh, so, you know, there, there's still a lot of discussion as to, you know, what is the place in the ecosystem that OpenStack has. Uh, there is, you know, huge investment, uh, companies like IBM and HP, you know, rallying around, uh, you know, what, what's going on in OpenStack. Um, you know, many companies will look at it as this is an alternative uh, to be able to just put everything's in the public environments. Uh, obviously, Amazon, you know, is the player in the public cloud, and uh, the likes of Google and Microsoft are, are going for the public cloud, but we know there's going to be a big market for private and hybrid clouds, and OpenStack, you know, still is one of the, you know, leading contenders in that space, and it is that ecosystem play which gives Red Hat, you know, a, a, a good seat at the table uh, for, for that discussion. So Stu, let's go through what we're looking for in day two. Obviously, um, OpenStack is going to be a big part of the conversation today. Yesterday we were teasing it out and everyone was like, just kind of like liberal in their eyes. Oh, well, all these OpenStack questions. Uh, hello, everyone wants to talk about OpenStack and Cloud Foundry and all the, the, the competitiveness at the platform as a service layer. And that has really been a key uh, discussion point and the crowd is certainly rabid about that topic. So I'm really interested in the OpenStack adoption and the stack, is it baked out? What needs to get done? Where are the white spaces? Where are the battlegrounds in the stack? Because at the end of the day, developers want speed to market, they want value. 
right? And then the ecosystem, we have, you know, Intel yesterday, Doug Fisher was amazing. I love that conversation. I replayed it again this morning, looked at it twice more. He had some really interesting discussion points around Intel and software. And Intel kind of not sneaking into the market, they've been a powerhouse in software. Huge, huge, uh, uh, huge whale in the marketplace. Intel is, it can set the tone big time. Cisco here, okay, for the first time. And then IBM for 10 years. This is an, uh, the big tier one players are here. Then you have a slew of startups. We saw Docker yesterday with the container, really targeting multi-platform, multi-cloud interoperability for application developers. So the list goes on and on, Stu. And you know, announcements. There's some significant news. Dell announced their private cloud solution, the general availability um, for their enterprise path. So if any, anyone running uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, can go right to the enterprise. Dude, this is significant action. Yeah, so John, it, it was a good series of announcements. Their partners are all stepping to the plate. Uh, as you said, we, we, we talked to Cisco uh, pretty intensely. Uh, we're going to have IBM and Dell on today uh, to talk about how they're, how they're partnering for software-defined environments on the IBM side. And, and this cloud positioning on Dell, uh, still waiting to see how all of the changes inside of Dell, you know, really, uh, you know, as Michael Dell likes to call them, the, the largest, uh, you know, startup, uh, you, you know, in, in the world right now. Uh, so, you know, it, it, you know, Dell's a bit of a wild card out there, and a partnership with Red Hat makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Dell keynote this morning talked about that, you know, they're looking to become the open networking company with partnerships with Cumulus, uh, and uh, they're doing things like Open Daylight. And, and John, as you said, at this show, I mean, docker, docker, docker. I was just uh, joking with people on Twitter that it seems like every time you say container or docker, there's spontaneous applause and everybody gets excited. You know, this can be, you know, is this a pivotal technology? Is this like vMotion from VMware? to allow simplicity and mobility of applications and, and make it simple for me to manage my applications separate from my infrastructure, which was really one of the you know, foundational uh, things that we're looking to get out of platform as a service. You know, and I talk to Jerry Chen over at Greylock all the time about this, and this was his first investment, Docker, so I always joke, hey, they're going to wear Docker pants, I don't want to see that high-tech uniform coming out. But all jokes aside, you know, Docker has mindshare right now, mainly because they have the container, which is not a new concept, but what when you bolt that on to cloud with virtualization, you now have a, a path for developers to have what they need to get the, the kinds of applications to the markets do, and that's the key. And we heard that yesterday from Intel yesterday around also the business models around these companies. Will the container business model be something that will be front of mind? And I was having conversations with the, with the, uh, the writers from the register last night, uh, Jack Clark, and I was talking about Docker, and the conversation we had, Stu, was are they going to focus too much on the business model? Will they jump and try to establish revenue versus establish proliferation and, and adoption. And I'm saying, if they go for the revenue model, they're crazy, they got Greylock behind them, and a big slew of VCs, they should not focus on that at all. Get the product in the hands of the customers, get some proliferation, get some adoption, and then build from there, because once you get that kind of adoption, Stu, you can have beachhead. The other thing that was, we talked about yesterday, that we're going to continue today, and I'd like to get your take on it is, can there be a red hat of fill in the blank? Peter Levine and Andreessen Horowitz uh, wrote a blog post on TechCrunch saying there'll never be a red hat of anything. And he was the CEO of ZenSource, was an early uh, employee at uh, Veritas, uh, tech luminary, so he had a lot of experience. We had guys yesterday saying that's not going to be that's not going to be true. We got HortonWorks, which is essentially the red hat for Hadoop. And I think with, with, with cloud, you can see some of the red hat business model subscription taking hold. Uh, but again, it's not, it's not a, uh, one business model fits all. There are some other approaches, open core, et cetera. So um, with that, what's, what's your key thing that you're looking for today? Yeah, yeah, I mean, John, the, uh, you know, we asked Jim Whitehurst, you know, why aren't there more billion dollar open source companies? And he said, you know, if, if selling free software, you know, was easy, everyone would be doing it. So, um, you know, I think there's some, some big potential markets out there, John, that we've been digging into. Um, you know, I, I, talking about, just talking to some of the smart people at the show here, Dave Cahill this morning on OpenStack said that every CIO out there is t telling his staff, you got to figure out what this OpenStack is and if we need to be there, um, and you know, especially guys that are already working with Red Hat are probably having those joint discussions as to where they go forward. So, a uh, lot of areas, uh, you know, for for new innovation and growth out there. This is the Cube. We're day two live coverage of two days wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Red Hat Summit. It's all about DevOps. It's all about software. It's all about innovation and open source at a level that we've never seen before. And uh, you know, with JBoss and Linux, you have Dev and Ops really the foundation of in the enterprise and it's exciting to cover. We'll be right back with continuous coverage day two at the Red Hat Summit. We'll be right back after this short break.